Hello, people, and welcome to the special, special Sunday edition of Cooking Without Looking with me, Stephen, the blind guy. It's Sunday, and do you remember when you were a kid, and on Sundays, your mom would always do a roast or something, and your house always smelled really good. Well, it's chilly out today, and I kind of figured a roast would be nice in the oven. So, I have a nice roast beef I picked up from the butcher. I always get my meat at the butcher. Nice fresh meat. Have a look at that sky cam. Oh, be careful. Don't drop your cell phone in the roast. Anyway, it's a nice big sirloin tip beef. Isn't it beautiful? Anyway, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm always saying so or anyway. I'm going to add to it because somebody's commented that I need to eat more vegetables. And I do, people. I really do eat vegetables. It's just when I'm doing my cooking without looking, it just happens to be something that perhaps I find that the green pepper's enough for the vegetable for the day. And I did have my chicken and Caesar salad. So salad's a green, even if it's homemade from a bag. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm putting carrots I'm going to stuff them down there in the roast beef. Because if you do this, then you have your vegetable and your everything all done in the roast beef. And when you stick it in the oven for two hours on 325, because it is a rather large, I'm just getting to make sure they're down there in the water. I did add a bit of water to the, oh, I better wash my hands because I touched the beef and I'm touching carrots. Cross contamination. Um, and I am the hygienic blind guy. And remember, for my friends who are blind and visually impaired, I am in my 20s. <laughs> and I do have a full head of hair. And I look like Brad Pitt. Or maybe, you know, what's that James Bond guy? Oh, there's my sometimers. I can't even think of his name. Oh, well. Anyway, I'm adding carrots to my beef roast. All right. Oh, I can't. Oh, there it is. See, I'm Mr. McFeely. Everything I'm doing, I'm doing by feel. Okay, I think that's probably enough carrots. So, now, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it even more delicious. Better wash my hands. Okay, now I am going to... These will be nice short videos today. Oh, by the way, during the week this week, I on Monday, during Superstorm Sandy, I had to go to Niagara Falls and speak at a lion's thing about dog guides. Had a nice dinner, and it happened to be roast beef with gravy and potatoes. And that's what we're having tonight. But... Uh, it was really raining and windy. So thanks to our dog, Rob, for the drive and for the chance to speak. It went well. I met a lot of nice people. Okay, people, what I'm doing now, you know, simple, 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 and cheap. I'm going to put canned potatoes, whole ones, Parisian potatoes in the roast too with the carrots see I'll dump this but they'll probably go all over the place and then I'll be in trouble oh see I think they're already going kahootska is that a Jewish word kahootska oh probably on the counter did they roll off oh how are they even gonna fit oh look at the size of that one okay I gotta shove them in there because the roast is so big. Hey, right? See the size of that. Arrgh. But, it wasn't expensive. So I shoved that in there. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, there's a space. You can shove one in there. Shove. Arrgh. Oh, See? I hope they didn't go all over the counter. Because I don't know. Okay. So, 
See, I got potatoes in there. Carrots, potatoes. So when you stick it in the oven for two hours on 325, you got your potatoes, you got your carrots, and you got your roast, and they all go together. Now I have another secret that I'm going to do. Um, first, let me check the counter here for any wandering potatoes. You know, Mr. Me... Oh! Oh! Almost had a blind accident. Okay, now what I'm going to do... I don't seem to find any. There's the carrots. There's the coffee maker. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is my little thing. You take beef bovril in the packets and you open them and you sprinkle it all on the potatoes that are sticking out from around the roast and on the roast beef. Oh my god, it gives it a good flavor because then later when I make the gravy, yes, I am going to make gravy. The blind guy is going to make gravy. Then it adds a flavor to the au jus. That's French, you know, au jus. <laughs> it means gravy, I think. I don't know. I'm not French. I am Canadian, but I don't speak French. And you know, I used to work for an airline before I went blind. And I used to go up and down the aisle, and when it was a French flight, like to Paris or Quebec, Montreal, um, I'd be handing out um, <coughs> headsets. And I didn't know what they were in French, so I'd go up and down the aisle and I'd just say, Tet set? Tet set? Because head is tet in French, or yeah, so, and set is set, so tet set. And one time there was a lady on the flight, and she came on with a, her kid who had chicken pox. And I said to other flight attendants, oh my god, look out, that kid's got pox du poulet. So, there's a little story for you. So I've got to put my beef bouillon powder on, and I don't know how I'm going to do this, because... I can't hold the camera and videotape at the same time. As always, I do not have a cameraman. I'm going to rest just on... Oh, I can do this. You know, I'm getting good at this where I can figure out these situations. Okay, now you take the beef bouillon, gotta open it, I'll do, I'll open them so then I can hold the camera and dump it on. And you'll be laughing because I'm blind, so it'll probably be going everywhere but on where I want it to go. Okay. Oh! Jesus. Okay, so here we go. Now I have to find the thing. Oh. Then we kind of do that. Are you laughing? Because it's probably not even going on anything. <laughs> I'm a good cook. So there. I have another one. Because I like to put two. Oh, now I can't even find where I opened it. Oh, this is so difficult. One day I am going to have a camera person and some guest hosts to help me do some cooking without looking. Right? And by the way, I like hoodies. So if you ever see a neat hoodie, send a comment, let me know, because I love all kinds of hoodies. Let me know where you get, get it. This. Okay, all right, here we go. So putting a little more on, sprinkle it all over, and then the potatoes get a really nice taste from that. Okay. And then we cover that with the lid. Oh, I have to put salt and pepper. Can't forget the salt and pepper. I know. Salt's not good for you. But it's good to put it on. I keep my salt and pepper up here. 
so I had to feel around. See, here's another thing when you can't see. I gotta see how I feel the edge of the, and then I guess where it is, and then I salt. Because you can always clean the counter, you know, after. Oh, this one will be hard because my pepper is a grinding pepper thing. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay, even the blind guy can't figure this out. How do you... Okay, here I go again. I'm going to... Well, people, you know, I do this to you once in a while. You can just sit and stare at the ceiling for a sec. Hello. Because I'm going to grind my pepper on. Hear that? My blind and visually, my visually impaired and blind friends will know that noise means I'm grinding pepper on. Because we hear everything. We do. We hear it all. My dogs are tippy tapping once again too because every time I'm cooking without looking, it's time for them to be eating. So they're always thinking, how come we're not? How come you're not cooking without looking for us? I don't know. I was going to tell you a story about something, but I haven't really done anything exciting lately. Except talking, my public speaking on dog guides, which went very well. They actually showed some of my cooking without looking episode before I came on. It was the meatloaf one. And my friend said that I'm to start naming them better because it's getting confusing. She doesn't know what part belongs to what. But see, I have to do it in all these parts because I can't videotape and cook at the same time. I'm getting better at it. Oh, by the way, guess what's missing tonight? There's no green pepper. <laughs> no green pepper. All right, so that's it. I'm going to open my... Uh-oh, how do I do this? Oh, I'll do it. I'm going to open my oven... See, and you probably already want, but from watching my cooking without looking shows, how I get stuff in the oven. Oh my God, that's heavy. Oh, there's going to be an accident. See, feel with my foot on the door. Oh, this is where I burnt myself last time. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Oh my God. i got to get the lid. Ow, ow, ow. Watch, you're going to wit witness me burn myself here. Look at how... Doesn't that look yummy? Look at that in there. Oh. It's going to be so... Oh, now I took the lid off and I don't know how... Oh, there it is. Oop, there it is. Okay. So, remember now, I have to go... Oh, it's heavy. There. There. So there. That'll be about the middle. If it's not, then don't worry about it. Shut the oven, and we get to leave that in there. We can go do whatever we want. Watch TV, go outside, play with the dogs, feed the dogs. In two hours, that beeper's going to go off, and I'll pull it out, because there's still a lot to do then. I have to make the gravy. I have to put the carrots and the potatoes in a separate thing, make the gravy, and I have to cut up the roast beef on a meat slicer. <gasps> You have to tune in for that, people, in the final product. Because imagine a blind guy using a meat slicer. <laughs> okay, so come back. Remember, I always appreciate that you're here watching my show. Let's see you soon on Cooking Without Looking, Episode 6. Oh my God, we're moving up, eh?